Hi guys, Dan Cooper here from Waves. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my own acoustic guitar mixing plugin using tone shaping, dynamics, effects, all that sort of stuff. And more specifically, in this video, I'm going to show you how you get the most out of using the macros and how you can get controls to do things that previously you wouldn't have been able to do. So let's get to this. Okay, let's have a quick blast of the guitar that we're going to be working on. If I could go back in time, I'd say stop and take a look around or do what you And let's put it in isolation. The tone sounds a bit muddy. And it's got a bit of harshness at the top end as well. And it being a mono recording, to my ears, just sounds like it's getting a little bit lost behind the vocal. So it will be nice to add a little bit of width to this and a bit of interest just out there in the sides. So let's build our acoustic guitar preset using Waves plugins in Studio Rack. And we're going to build something fairly complex, which covers tone shaping, dynamic processing, stereo spreading, and ambiences. We're going to start with EQ, and we can do something quite interesting with this. So in the first insert, I'm going to load Waves F6 Dynamic EQ. And I want to do a couple of things with this EQ on one macro, being mud removal down in the low ends and adding sweetness up in the top ends. And I'm going to make good use of the Dynamic EQ, as I find it delivers very transparent results. Now you'll generally find mud down anywhere between two to 500 hertz. And of course we could add a static cut like this, but I often find that this can make the tone sound a bit scooped, resulting in thin sounding guitars. And we can use Dynamic EQ to carve out that mud in more transparent ways. Now, I'm gonna put this band around about 150 hertz as a starting point. It's got a fairly wide Q on default, gonna leave that in place. I know I quite like slow attack, quicker release for Dynamic EQ but experiment with these for yourself. Everyone has different tastes after all. And let's just set up for now a quick bit of dynamic EQ using the thresholds and the range. So we'll lower the threshold until we start getting some compression going on and then adjust the range to get some mud removal going. Okay, that's quite aggressive as you can tell. So it's not really doing anything. Now we've got that dynamic EQ working on the muddy range, which is nice. But as I said, I also want to be adding some top end air as well. So if we use this band over here, number six, make that into a shelf. Just make sure that works, which it does by adjusting the gain. Excellent. Now, what I want to do is be able to apply this mud removal, but at the same time, increase the air ever so slightly in one move using a macro. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's just move this out of the way. Load up the macro editor. If I go back to F6, click on the second band, being the mud band. As you can see, it's already set to 150 hertz. That's where I've got that. I'm going to right click this, add macro to number one. If we look over at the editor, that's now been populated. We've got a red ring around this dial here to show that's linked to macro one. And I want to assign a control range to this. because so when I move that macro, I don't want this band to sweep throughout the EQ here. That would be pointless. I want it to focus on just the mud range and we can very easily dial this in here. So I'm going to go for a range of 150 hertz to 450 hertz. And if we just test that quickly here on the macro, you can see that that is moving only between that range from a value of naught to 100%. So that's working. And I'm gonna name this mud range. We're gonna head back over to F6. I'm gonna make another macro now so that we can adjust the range of the dynamic EQ. So how much compression are we getting in that band? And for this, I'm going to right click, add macro, macro two, again, over in the macro editor, that's been populated and we have it here. And if we twist this dial, and hit play. It's doing the opposite of what we want it to do. Very simple to fix. Back over here in the editor, we just flip the control range. We're reversing the direction of travel over here on this dial. So 
So it gets to 100% over here on the macro and we're getting a larger range, which is what we want. But the problem is when you've got it at zero, we've got expansion, which is not what we want. So to get around this back over here in the editor, we need to set a control range and that's going to be from zero to minus 18. Again, let's have a little play and see if that works. Perfect. So we can set the amount, the range, and sweep around the muddy frequency until we feel that our guitar sounds better. As I said earlier, I want to add a little bit of sweetness while we're increasing the range, that being reducing the mud in this acoustic guitar. Now, back over to F6, band six, which is gonna be our high shelf, we can simply add the gain, right click to macro two. Again, this is populated over here in the macro editor, but you'll notice now that we've got a high shelf that's taking away top ends, it's not what I want. Again, control range, we can set its minimum to be zero. Let's just test that out. So we're getting dynamic EQ and a gentle lift in the top. However, at more extreme values, we may find that this is too much. And if you just want a gentle little bit of presence adding in, that's going to take your head off. So what we're going to do over here back in the editor, I'm going to set a maximum range for that top end, just so we know we're dialing in a subtle lift in the top instead of an extreme one. I'm just going to go 6 dB. Let's just reset the control and have another playthrough. Notice now that we could be quite extreme with that mud removal. And the top end is much more subtle. So, so far we have named this macro mud range and I'm going to call this mud remove. So we're done with F6 now, we can close that down and we can add another Waves plugin into our own custom Studio Rack plugin. And I'm gonna go for Deessa. Some acoustic guitar recordings can sound a little bit harsh in the top ends. Of course you could EQ this out, but I find Deessa's do a really good job of helping to tame that harshness. Set the frequency to around 3K and I'm gonna add the threshold to macro three. I'm gonna rename this D-Harsh. Let's just give it a quick go. Now, DSs, like any processor, can easily be overdone, which would harm the sound of your track. Now, at the minute, it's uh, set up for the wrong direction of travel here. So, again, let's jump into the editor, switch that around here with this little button. Let's check that that's working. So, value of 0 over here on the macro, you turn it up, it brings the threshold down. However, I don't want this to go too far, so I can set this value as its maximum. I can go in here and say, at its max, I want it to be minus 40. Just give that a go. So 0%, threshold is at 0, at maximum, doesn't go any further down than that. Perfect. Now let's do another layer of tone shaping. And I'm gonna use an instance of Q2, very straightforward EQ filter. It's only got two bands. That's all I need for this. Let's engage both those bands. First is gonna be a high pass, also known as a low cut. And the second is gonna be a band pass, just on the other side of that there. So we're gonna have a little bump. That I find quite useful when you're doing low cutting. It's great for maintaining a bit of tone where you need it while the roll off takes away stuff that you don't need. And we're going to do a similar trick that we did with F6 and we're going to control the frequency of both of these so they move at the same time as you see here. And as you see we've got macro 4 available so I'm going to add macro 4 to the frequency of band 1, macro 4 to the frequency of band 2. Over in the editor these pop up. And let's see what happens as we turn the dial. They both move at the same time. And we can further adjust that little resonant bump there. As you can see, those two move together very nicely. And I'm just gonna call this low cut. And let's have a listen. Sounds good, bit of D harsher. before and after of the four macros we've already set up. The 
it's definitely sounding sweeter to my ears. Now let's look at some dynamics processing. And I like to use the CLA76 being a FET compressor. It's a very fast compressor by nature, and I find that they work very well on acoustics. And let's load this in. Now, when we set 1176s, we dial in the input here to get the compressor going, because it's got a fixed threshold, and dial back the output so we can level match. This helps us compare before and after, so we know that we've got a tasteful amount of compression set. Problem is though, when you work with plugins, you can only adjust one at a time, unless you've got a control surface. If you use, let's say an 1176 in the flesh, you'd have your left hand on the input and your right hand on the output, and you balance the two in one action. Now, the good thing with Studio Rack is that we can mimic this two hand motion that we would use on hardware in this now, and it's really quite simple to set up. I'm gonna use Macro 5 to do this. So when we twist in Macro 5 and we're applying compression, the input will go clockwise and the output will go anti-clockwise. First up, right click, add to macro five. That's the input connected. Now we're going to do the same to output, add macro five. Let's double check that over here in the editor. That is the case. Let's load the plugin and twist the macro. And you'll notice they both move at the same time, exactly the same way. The problem with that is this is just not how you use an 1176. You'd be dialing in compression at the same time, really pushing the output. Yeah, it's just not how we work with an 1176. So let's flip the direction of travel here on the control range. Again, let's just see how that performs, twisting this macro. Okay, I'd say we're halfway there, but the level will be all over the place by doing this. We need a starting point for both of these so that when we listen through the compressor, we haven't got any level differences before we've got compression going. Now, to do this, we've got to enter some values into the macro editor. And after much trial and error, I think I found some values that work quite well. Being for the input, the minimum range, minus 34, max zero. For the output, minimum being minus 19 to infinite. Let's take a quick look, see how that sets itself up. So the compressor is engaged, as you can see, the little blue indicator is on. Let's play the acoustic guitar and check the meters over here. We shouldn't be getting any compression, but if I bypass this, the level should be the same. Bypass the compressor. And back in. And let's dial in some compression. There we go. Got some compression. And the level difference didn't change that much. Now we can use the macro range here to tune the speed of these dials a bit better. So if I go for the input one and bring this down, if you look back over at the plugin, you'll notice the input moves a bit quicker now than the output. Let's hear the effect of that. which I think does a better job of maintaining a consistent level from the compressor. And I've left this one for the output left at 100%. So I'm pretty happy with that. Just name the macro, comp 76. And the next macro, what are we gonna do now? Well, as I said earlier, it'd be nice to be able to add a little bit of stereo interest to this mono acoustic guitar. And a plugin that I feel has a really nice doubler is in this, Greg Wells Voice Centric. And I'm only interested in using the doubler section. So I'm gonna turn off the reverb and its main wheel here that has lots of other processing. And I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add macro six, just that simple. And if you notice, this macro has automatically named itself doubler after this control. So one less thing for me to have to do. It's nice. Subtle, but it definitely adds some nice interest out in the, in the width there. So, so far we have looked at tone shaping, we've looked at dynamic processing, we've just looked at adding a little bit of artificial width as well. It's time now to add a little bit of ambience, but this is going to be with a twist, and we're going to use a parallel split now because I want to use two types of reverb. The first being a medium size room, it's on rack one, and on rack two, I fancy going for a plate but I'm not gonna blend these two reverbs together in one go. Oh no, I wanna do things differently. If I just disable the plate reverb for the minute and jump into the room reverb here in R verb, we've got this wet dry control. Let's have a listen to it quickly. It 
Sounds nice. Bit too much up here, I say, but I think it sounds nice if it's subtle. If we add this to macro 7, you'll see we have control over that there. I want to set a range on this. If I jump over here and have a quick listen, I'd say that should be a maximum reverb for this particular preset. And that's at about 41%. And I can enter that in over here. Let's just round it down. Max 40%. Double check this over here by twisting the dial. This over here, the macro is at 100%. We've only got maximum 40% over here. Brilliant. That works for me. But don't forget, we've got another reverb we want to blend in, but only at a certain point. If I engage this, jump back over now into this plate reverb. I'm going to add this to the same macro, number seven. And this is where things get interesting. So I can adjust these macro ranges and say when the macro is around about 50%, the other reverb can start to turn up as well. Let me demonstrate. So over here, this range on macro seven is the room reverb. When we pass 50%, we've got maximum room reverb. If you remember in the preset, that's set to the wet dry maximum 40%. And then we've got over here, so you can see this is the plate reverb that starts to pick up. So let's have a little go. So the first half of this is just a room reverb. When we pass that, we've got 40% room reverb with a bit of plate coming into play as well. Now for the plate. And you could do a similar thing here as well if you don't want your wet dry to go past a certain point. Say 40% is the maximum that you like. Just very easy to set in there on the control range. So now you've got a good idea, hopefully, of how the macro editor works in Studio Rack. It's very straightforward. It's worth keeping open the whole time while you're building your custom presets and plugins here. And hopefully you can see that it's a super powerful way to get a plugin to do more things in one move than you would normally do with your mouse. And as I pointed out earlier, it's a great way to kind of get that hardware user vibe, twisting one dial in whilst you're twisting another one in the opposite direction. So now that we've got this all set up, of course, we can save our preset, share it with our friends and colleagues, or we can just put it to work straight away. So let's get that vocal and those keyboards back in the mix and have a little play around with my new plugin on this acoustic guitar. If I could go back so let's start with a mud remover being the dynamic EQ. Adjust the range, make sure we've got the right area we're reducing. A little bit of D harsher. Low cut. That's nice. That leaves a bit of room in the mix there for the roads. Let's go back round again and apply some compression. If I could go back in time, I'd say stop and take a look around. Don't do it. Touch a doubler. And a little bit of verb. Do a quick before and after. Okay, I fully appreciate that was a lot of information I've thrown at you there. But hopefully you've got an idea of just how powerful Studio Rack is. It is well worth having a play with. So if you're a Waves user, get yourself a copy of Studio Rack, have a go for yourself, make some of your own plugins, and let us know in the comments below what you're using Studio Rack for. We really want to know. Anyway, hope you guys got something from this video. I'm Dan from Waves, and I'll see you again soon. Make